Hey y'all, what's up? Hope you all having a well day today. I'm doing a review of Married to Medicine, Season 6, Episode 3, Crabby Ladies. All we're waiting for, we finally got caught meeting with the ladies. But I'm going to speak to that later on, in, close to the end of the um, review. Starting off, we get Dr. Contesta and Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott came home after the party and everything. Contesta was at the house. She told her husband that since she came since her father came from the airport he was sleeping from most of the time and then when he got in the car he just straight to sleep and he had a hard time not sleeping like he always sleeping so she said it's something going on he said oh, what's happening then he said she lost he lost a lot of weight then the last time i saw him it could tell he's really sick so right now she told us that he had Crohn's disease i didn't get the disease last time she mentioned it so but she mentioned it now and I think she attacks the cells and tissues in the body and everything. And so she have that. But I think she thinks it's more to the story than having that Crohn's disease. Because it's like getting way sicker. So he may have cancer. And um, Dr. Got, Dr. Scott told her about the party. Had told you had a lot to say and everything. That you didn't call her and stuff. And I said we all know what Toya was wrong. Toya was definitely wrong for that situation. We all believe Dr. Contessa. Because at the same time. I mean, granted, if you want to call or text, that's fine. It is in there. But sometimes when things situation happen and you're in the mo mode and you worry about your parents or something like that, that freaking calling somebody is not in not in their freaking forefront. So she sent her husband in her place. So for you for not to understand that, it's like crazy. So Dr. Contessa, she was like upset about it. I said, yo, I got a lot of things going on and not calling you. It's like ridiculous. I got my father to worry about his sickness. So yeah, if I want to give me a call, Here's my ass. Well, it is what it is. So, I got things to worry about. So, this guy looks snappy. It wasn't towards her husband. It's just like she's just upset that she would take some petty steps of a party, bullshit at a party. With do you, Dr. Eugenia, even understand the concept of the party for her to quake to her, think about her father and how she should have thought about you. I said, no, she's not thinking about you. She sent her husband. She cared enough enough to send her husband to your party so somebody to represent her to be there. For you to get all upset and your feelings about that, that's like tacky Toya. So um, later on the scene, they had the father in the kitchen, Dr. Scott and the grandkids was there, and he was talking, and he was the um, he was there, and then he said they was having biopsy reports and everything, and they couldn't find anything, so they had to do a lot of things. And that's what Contessa said with Crohn's disease, it attacks the tissues, it scarred a lot of tissues, so it's really hard to get a really good reading. Of the biopsy to give a diagnostic so he's saying like the doctor could think there's more to what he's later on and he may have cancer and everything so it's like really touching and when the kids start crying Dr. Scott never get uh, kids upstairs and the grandkids upstairs so you can talk to your own father and Contessa is kind of worried she said are oh, you something you're not telling me is this more to it because they both are doctors so she knows something's going on and the guy said no I don't want to get any um, treatment done until I know for sure exactly it's cancer. So it's like his pride that he wanted to make sure instead of going through all this medication because he, I think he's going through medication now with other stuff. So it's like it's kind of dreary on him and taking more and going to the doctors a lot. And it's just like he knows his time is going. He said, I've been set for a long time, baby. And I just, I just know. I just know what it is. I'm just making it, making it um, last as much as I can. I'm trying to be there as much as I can for my grandkids. And I know I haven't been there for you in your life like that, but I'm making up for it. And it's kind of touching. They started crying. He started crying because she's crying and everything. He said, I just hard to help. It's hurt to make you feel sad and everything, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to be all right, and I'm going to be there for your kids. So I'm going to be here as long as I can. So it's like, it's very that tough situation where you you love your parents. It's like, even though they haven't been there like that, and you know he's been sick. And you want just want to worry about he's being okay, so he could be around and long enough, just to build a happy bond and friendship with your her children, which is something. So I'm just playing everything goes well for Contessa father, and that he stay healthy for a little bit, get the treatment that he needed, get the help that he can, so he could be around for a long time for her daughter and her grand and his grandkids. So I just pray for that everything happening. And it's tough. He said he keep her posted. He not gonna keep anything for her. And just be up and honest. When you live in the house, to be up and honest with your daughter, and she be there, and just 
live your best life. Make the most both most of it. Don't dwell on the sickness. Just dwell on that. Make a, making and building happy memories. And that's what would be great for you as the father of her. And also for Contessa to have that happy memories if decided the father gonna pass away or not. So he's gonna do sickness. And sickness gonna be the part of his death sentence. But right now, he's not worried about that. He worried about building memories. And that's what's most important right now. Alright, so we get heavily playing in this paintball event for Jackie and Quad. And it was just going to be just those three. And they just were sitting there and saying that, um, talking to Jackie, and it was, um, then Quad text heavily and said that she couldn't make it. She had a meeting to go to, and she couldn't go to, go to it. And so, Heavy was kind of upset about that, and Jackie read the message, and she said, yeah, it's kind of bummed out that she's not coming. But, um, Jackie said, I kind of understand why she may not be around. But, Jackie said it would be good for Quad to be present and talk to them um, about what's going on. And she would appreciate Quad being there. And she liked that Quad was there. And the girls were there for her when she was going through her um, turmoil with uh, Curtis. And she appreciated the girls being there for her. So she just wanted to do the same thing for Quad as well. And think that Quad should let the girls in and not shut them out. Because they go, it's a time right now to need a person. I want you to understand, everybody's grieving process is different. And nobody's grieving process is going to be the same. So some people, when they go through a hurt and situation... They're turned to shut out. They're turned to keep to themselves. And wondering if somebody will reach out to them. I mean, understand if the people might do reach out. They might not, you might not respond back right away. Or you may not respond to text messages because you're going through things. But at least knowing that people do care. So some people does not grieve in a way that they need somebody around them to help them support themselves. Sometimes it does make it easier to have friends to support who always in the same page should be there for you. Who doesn't make you feel that they judge you and attack you. And I think that's a quad feeling right now. She feel like the girl's going to judge her. The girl's not going to be there. It's not going to be sisterly. It's not going to be that friendship support environment that they want to be. Because they so all, I mean, they feel like that quad is not being around, being distant. They have their whole problems, but they still being there for you. But you shutting yourself out for everybody else. Which I understand both sides. I understand where we're coming from because she feel like she going through things and she may not want to reach out right now. She's not in a point in life to respond because she don't want to say the wrong thing or be snappy or bitchy or something like that. She shouldn't get her stuff together. And when she get her stuff together, maybe she come around. I understand the other girl's um, thing side too. When we're supposed to be friends, we're supposed to be there for each other. This is not a support time to support. Now, when I say everything was going on, but at the same time, Know that to be there for them. Just say, girl, if you want to talk, I'm here for you to talk. I will not say anything. I want to just listen. And I think that's what the girls need to do to make Quad feel better. It's like, just sit there and listen to her and everything. I know Quad has her reasons and she's in her own feelings and she's in her own way. And I do believe that it's all about Quad show sometimes. But just meet halfway. And Mariah says something later that I'm going to mention that it does make sense. Now... Simone with her son Michael and I like this scene because she was sit down and talking to her son because she was um, Michael she was first doing test drive with him they were driving the car teaching stay on your own on your side of the lane make sure you pass that park correctly don't be close to the curve don't be too far away from the curve it was teaching him the signs both hands on the stable wheel and everything so it was nice teaching him. And then went in the house, and she had like, like a grown adult conversation with him. Like she sat there, she asked him questions, she listened to him. She didn't go overboard. She didn't freaking get angry. And that's exactly what I think you should do with um, Cecil. Like, if you could have this level of conversation with him, and not get in all uh, freaking in your feelings, because Michael called you out. He said y'all both stubborn. He said y'all both stubborn as hell. Y'all don't want to back down. And uh, I like that he be able to speak his mind. And she didn't get upset about it because she said Michael's her, emotion, her emotional child. And her other child is in college right now, so he's not around to see the, what's going on. But Michael's there every day, so he sees what's going on. And he said he appreciate Michael said he appreciate his parents working it out 
instead of trying to separate because he loves he loved the fact that he could have both parents in his life. He don't want to choose to stay who they want to stay majority with and others. So he liked that. And and Simone said, Get if we get out of line, just give us a check. He said, Yeah, I'm gonna get y'all a check. She goes this special way. So I like how she just didn't blow up for him because at the end of the day, it does affect the children. And it does affect your children a long time when they have both their parents having this turmoil you and you can't do nothing. So you gotta make sure the kids is alright. You gotta talk to them. You gotta understand they understand what's going on. And Michael understand what's going on, but he just appreciate that his parents is working it out to make it better. And I like that. So it's good that Simone talked to her and talked to him and not getting upset. And she didn't get upset when he said y'all both are stubborn and uh stuff. I said y'all both are. Y'all need just need to let go your egos and just meet halfway. Can y'all just do that? Like what is going to do that. All right, so we get Mariah Lauren. It was so cute. Lauren was throwing her old stuff away, throwing stuff. She didn't want this because she feels so babyish. She about to go to college. She's 13 years old. She she going to college soon. So Mariah came upstairs. She said, "What's going on?" She said, I, "Ma, I just want to throw this stuff. This is too like babyish. I just want to be grown. I want to get a new set of life, a new style, new meaning, and new everything to herself." And she said, "Where it is coming from? I understand that you want to throw some stuff away, but this look cute and everything." And I said, "Damn!" I said, "Then this girl is throwing stuff away." I said, "I couldn't do that, sure." But it is what it is. So she said, "Got a maid." So they had to sit down and talk. And it was a nice little talk with a mother-child conversation. And then how she feel like she just feel like she just need to be treated like more grown up like. Even though she about to go to high school, she 13, 14 years old. She getting older, she got to start making decisions on herself. She needs to start growing up and she don't want to be treated as a baby. I said, Lauren, understand how you feel because I'm 32 year old right now and people still think I'm like a teenager or a young kid and I don't look my age. So it's like, I still might get carded. I still might say, oh, how old are you? Are you really that age? Do you look younger than that? So it's like, understand, people can still make a mistake you as a baby. And you look like a baby face. And Mariah said she understand her daughter Finn because she was like that too. She was a petite, kind of young girl. She didn't develop no and curves, no body and everything. And she was getting shunned out. Boys wasn't even hollering at her. Mama Lucy cut her straight, said it was no sex and everything. Gave her straight little thing, put her birth control and everything. Mariah said she won't do that to her daughter. But she just will at least have her sit down and have a talk to her child saying no sex before marriage. Don't be out there. Don't try to act like you have to do things because your friends are doing things. Because she said, because in front of my mother, all my friends of my age, even though I want to be close to them, I want to be cool with them, was getting pregnant and having sex. And I'm lucky that I didn't get that happening to my mother distill that values and moral morality in me so make sure I make the better decisions and not fall into the prey. So she just want to make sure her daughter is okay and understand that yes you want to get older and understand but at the same time it's no rush to get there. Live your childhood, live your life and do the best you can and not make small, not making fast rash decisions because you're friends and everything. So it was nice to have them have to sit down and have a talk. And I just allow parents to do that with their kids. Like have to sit down, question them things, ask them different questions, um, answer their questions, talk to them about things. Because a lot of parents don't sit down and have a conversation with their children. They feel like their children are grown just like them. They talk to them like an adult. It's like that. Yes, they may be a little mature, but they still a child at the end of the day. So they still looking for you for guidance to have that sit down and have that talk. Because if you don't do that, they're going to start looking for someone else. And you don't want that to happen. So I like that how Simone had that talk with Michael and see how his feelings and everything get in touch. Well, how he felt, view things and how better her, she could work herself out with her marriage with her, his father. And I like how Mariah sat down with Lauren and talked to her about things, about being a growing up and going to high school in that period age, your adolescent years, and you're going to be peer pressure and want you not to do what to do. Don't have sex right now. It's it's a lot. So it's like that how they had a conversation and talk. Now we get toy Eugene. They was house hunting. So they pay off their debts. They debt free. So they go house hunting and I guess they're looking for their forever house. Because I guess they got money. So their budget is $2 million for a house. I said, oh, that's a lot of money. I mean, you got a lot of debt. But you got to pay, pay $2 million for a house. And it's what it is. So, but he's a doctor. So he make that kind of money anyway. 
And the nice, the house they're looking at was nice. They had everything they wanted. They had the pool. They had his and her closet. They had a nice little space. They had like these five bedrooms, four, a couple bathrooms and everything. So it was nice. So when I sat down with a real estate agent, and before that, they were talking about the debt was saying the kind of they went, Bob went back, flashbacks a couple of debt problems about the house, about um, the money situation, the IRS thing, and celebrating the party of being debt free. It's like they're trying to conserve and be in a budget right now and not trying to do overboard and go overload and they be back to the way they was before. They want that happening again. Especially Toya's money conscious right now. They said they want to go through that. I don't want my husband overworking himself, paying off these bills, doing that. I want him home more to be with the family, to not break the family up, and just like that. So when they sat down with a real estate agent and see what's the budget of the house, she said it was two million nine thousand, two million nine hundred thousand. I said, ooh. She said, uh, uh-uh. no, me not do that. It's way out of the budget. She said, why you pick this house when you know it's too much money like that? And he said, one minute, I budget two million. He said, I don't have a mind going back to work to pay the lifestyle. Okay. She said, I understand that. And I appreciate your enthusiasm. I appreciate your loyalty to want to make our family work. But at the same time, I'm happy when you home more. I'm happy when you not have to go overwork yourself and kill yourself and to pay for things. That's how we got it done before because we were overspending on means, budgeting. And I'm budgeting two million dollars. We're not going in a penny over. We could go less, but we're not going penny over, and we're not budgeting over that two million a month. So we need to find something better. And when it's not budget, and sometimes if you have to make some little sacrifices, some of the stuff that you want in the house, you can make a little sacrifice with the stuff that you want. Cause with stuff that they want and need it, it will cost more. But why not get a house where it had the potential to add more stuff to it later where you can have most of the job you want and you can add to it later if you because it's your house. But don't go in the whole house being in debt and paying more when you don't need to. So Toy was kinda of right when they would tell him say, No, 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 I appreciate you, I love you for doing that. But no, we not go over two million dollars. So that's it, it's a done deal. We're gonna look something else, we can find something else, but this is not the house for us. And even though it's what she wants it had everything that she wanted, everything that they wanted as a unit, but the budget doesn't fit the means of this house. So they're not going back to that. I said, you just got out of debt. Don't try to go back to it. So she said, no. He said, I just want to make you happy. She said, yes, you can make me happy. But my, what, Jean, you understand that? What makes her happy if you being home more and being around with the family? That's what makes her happy. So if they get like a less than two million dollar house or at least a two million dollar house she'd be happy and knowing if y'all went in the budget and you had to struggle to pay for all the extra stuff so i like how she said that and just calm down and he understands and it's like they just, just gotta find another house you could get a house with at least most of your um stuff that you wanted with less money with within your budget means so i like that so the majority of the episode was this crab boil right so Heavenly through a crab boy, she invited all the ladies, and she was telling all the ladies, I need one lady, I need you to be a referee, I need you to be okay, you will be cordial with this girl, because I know y'all have a hard problem. So she invited all the ladies to go. Um, she had a crab boil, a lawyer was helping her, she was seasoned, and they was doing everything together, and two, they figured took the bag, a wet bag with all the loud crabs, and it dropped on the ground, and she was picking them up and throwing them in the pot, picking them up throwing them in the pot. I said, bitch. I mean, I guess it's going to get cooked, but I would say, listen, just give me the crab legs, and that's it. You don't need to get all these crabs. Crab legs, you'll have, it's not live. You just need to steam it a little bit. A couple of things, it'll be good. Get a little butter, keep it a day. But this live-ass crabs, it takes too much. It takes a long time to cook, but it tastes good if you season it well. But still, all that is too much. So, Simone came first, and the other ladies start coming in, like Toya, then Contessa, then Mariah. They always looking nice. Jackie didn't make it there yet. But she is coming there because she said she was at the hospital. She was at her job working. So, but she's going to get there shortly. <coughs> they say this, oh, She said she invited a quad and she hoped the quad is attend. Right? So, they sit there and they're talking. Simone said, I'm going to get her out of my business because I need to know what's going on. I'm going to keep it 100. I'm not here for quad bullshit. I said, ready? you ready on 10? Like, you know this girl is a bit distant from y'all. So, if y'all coming in on hard attack mode, 
she gonna shut down. Can y'all do a different approach? And that's exactly what happened. So, said so she said she done with her bull. She not returning her calls. I mean, I understand when some people going through some things, with issues, and they have problems. Some people will not respond, even though they know you responded to them and you calling them and reaching out. They will understand, but they feel like if they answer, they can't deal with your judgmental right now. The judgment or the stuff like right, or opinions or anything. Just give her space. But understand that quad sometimes like in your marriage. I think you fall for your marriage like this and it's your fault because you stayed. Because I could see clearly you your marriage with Dr. G was not genuine. I don't feel any love connection between y'all two. I just feel like you found somebody who's giving the lifestyle that you wanted. You got the lifestyle you wanted that you want to pretend on. Um, be independent ones um, for your own because you got what you need. You got your status. So you have somebody to help you there. And I feel that like Dr. G feel like he get a trophy wife a girl who will be there for him and stuff like that. So it's look like young values at once it was not aligning. So I didn't understand how y'all got together because I didn't feel no compatibility with y'all too. So it's like what are we going through? You going through it because you stay in the marriage because you stay in the marriage. Did you really love this man? Did y'all ever really love each other? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't feel like y'all really love each other, but it is what it is. You know this marriage, you know this turmoil right now. So it's either you staying or you gonna leave because you putting yourself a lot of emotional pressure and those emotional things. And it's clearly to a lot of people outside looking in that your marriage was never that great in the beginning with. Your marriage was never that unified store for y'all both had different values so y'all was moving differently it, just because y'all was married doesn't mean that y'all was in your not a happy front i could tell that this thing it took this cheating scandal come out to really make sense on everything how she was feeling last season but at the same time it's like did they really care because they really caught quad really care for dr g like that i don't know i'm not in a marriage but i Outside looking in, I don't feel like Quad was really into Dr. G or he was into her like that. And they just was cohabitating for now and put up the front. And now they just got to deal with survival and the consequences of being married. So a divorce would be great for them. But as of right now, they're not divorced and she's going through the motions. So she's got a hard time and everything. So Simone is not here with the ball. Tori just felt like Quad should have reached out to her more and say things to her because we're supposed to be friends and why are you not speaking so you keeping us a um, distance. we there for each other and we should be there for you. We're your friends and you can't call us your friends if you're not responding to us. You keep a distance or well, we're not your real friends. You got your new friends and everything. So that was already on 10. Simone and Toya. Mariah came down, she Mariah know about Quad a little bit, and she just had her own little opinions about things and how things should be filled, how things should be going. Contessa came in, and Contessa had a little feeling towards the toy. She said, well, I heard some things were going to say about me, and nobody could call me in my face and all that stuff. So Contessa was saying what she wanted to say, and nobody could damn toy. She said, I don't care. I'm gonna be, I can't be fake. I said, nobody cares. At the end of the day, you was wrong. You was not right for what you said. You was not right for justifying the, what you did to the party last week. And Contessa had every right to feel the way she feel because at the end of the day, it does go both ways. So if you feel the type of way about her not attending, why the hell you didn't call her and see what's up? Like, she sent her husband to her place. So that should be enough for you, for you to just understand that she couldn't be there because her father is really sick. And how her father, the way we saw her father now, I understand why she's so worried and she's so into her father and caring for her father and nothing else has it's got to take the back burner besides her kids and her husband. But everybody else taking the back burner. So she said her party is crappy and bullshit. It is crappy and bullshit. So my wife said, maybe we want to say that to her because all to Toya live for is her parties and stuff like that. So you tell her shit is bullshit and crappy and shut down. But I don't care what you feel in Toya. Contessa was right had to feel shit away because she said it does go both ways. If I couldn't call you and I have some issues and you knew I had issues with my father and everything, why you didn't call me and reach out and see what's going on and say how she's going, how's your father doing? So you are petty, you are mad because she didn't call you for not attending to your party. But she sent her husband to tell you why she couldn't be there, but that couldn't be enough. You need to hear for herself. So Mariah said, well, Toy is all about loyalty, so all Toy wanted to say, Contessa, you could have picked up a phone and called her. I said, why did she need to? Why do she need to? I understand maybe why she feels she should get a text or call, but why? Her husband was there. It's not like nobody never showed up. If nobody never showed up and she didn't say nothing, I'd be on a different story. But her husband was there. 
So he represented for both of y'all and he said why he's not there. But your friend was taking the whole pettiness to the whole new level, but nobody said nothing to her. So Contessa would call her out on it, call her bird and everything, and say, I don't speak to you and so like that because you have nothing to say, it go both ways. So she said that in relation to what Quad came. So um so Contessa understand why Quad was keeping her distance because she said it feel like y'all gonna be judging her. Y'all gonna just judging women. And someone said you came in a group with judgy women. I said I'm glad y'all understand because y'all judgy like when somebody's going through the turmoil like this. Even though I guess in the past season, because I started watching Man to Medicine last season, that they said Quad was it's karma for Quad because Quad was all judging that everybody else relationships and marriages, but now it's on her. She's trying to keep distance, and everybody should be sympathy and sorry for her. I guess their sensitivity is not there as well. So Contessa understands why she keep her distance. And because she said it goes both ways. She said, I never heard from Quad. She don't call me. She'll pick up the phone, call me and everything. And all that stuff. So Heavenly was throwing his things. And they were sitting down talking. Quad came. Quad, Quad came. And everybody was so excited. Heavenly was, Heavenly was excited. Toy was sitting there. Simone was sitting there. Mari was looking. Uh, Heavenly and Quad hugged out. She kissed Contessa and she touched Mariah, Simone, and Toya in the shoulder. So I said, oh, that's something. Because the body language she says, oh. So like that. She said, how you doing? So how you doing? So how you doing? I was saying, whatever. And this lady, Quad, did not even sit down for a minute. She didn't get a relax. She didn't even get a drink. She didn't even get nothing to eat. Simone, she said, Quad, has been a long time. Let's catch it up. Where have you been? She said, about what? She said, about everything. I said... Listen, y'all already on attack bullshit mode. Can y'all let her sit there? Can y'all let her be easy to ease the conversation to the table with y'all? Y'all is straight attack vultures to this girl. And it's this shut her down. And y'all know how Quad is. It's like, if y'all know how she is when she dissing herself when she had problems, why were you in a vulture attack mode already in off the back? So they was going at uh, Quad and someone was going at uh, uh, um, going at it a little bit. Simone was getting loud. She got up. She said, I can't deal with you. All that stuff. And she said, she said she pissed. She just pissed and said, let her go. I was saying, why are you getting pissed and let her go? She said, Quad going to be a Quad. She's not dead. She understands. We all going to do issues and problems, but we are friends. We should be there for each other. For you to shut us out like this, that's not right. Like I said, I understand where they're coming from, but you got to understand where Quad's coming from, too. She not like that other people like who want to open up so quickly when she go through a turmoil. So I was like, okay. So it was so heated back and forth, and... It's like they was come jabbing and jabbing and jabbing and stuff until Kawhi got up and got off. She said, I can't deal with this and stuff that Mariah and no, uh, heavily with the court talk to Kawhi. She said, I can't do this. It's like too much or that stuff. I don't feel love. I don't feel appreciated and stuff. I'm going to do a lot of things for my marriage. Y'all don't understand. And she said, we do understand. I'm here for you. Contessa came up. She kept walking. She said, let's get your friend. We here. All that stuff. And Toya was saying stuff. They said, and Toya came over there. She said, you, Toy, I haven't got a text or nothing for you. And everything. And Toya said, well, I don't know where you are in your marriage right now, Quad. I said, that's what I understand. She's saying that y'all never reach out. But like, y'all getting mad when um, she responded. Because some of y'all not reach, haven't reached out to her. Some of them have. It seemed like, to me, according to how this scene feels, it seemed like Heavenly and Contessa has been reaching out, and Jackie has been reaching out to Quad. But Simone and Toya and Mariah may not have been reaching out to her as much. So like that. So the way how Bala Angel when she came to that party. So it was like, she said, you haven't been reaching out, you haven't been turning the course and stuff. And she said, I don't know where you have been. She said, see, that's what I'm talking I'm telling you, I've not been there. And all that stuff walked out. And the Contessa hugged her. She Contessa understand where she's coming from. She said, don't let anyone return you down as a woman. Don't let anyone turn you down as a woman. We understand you. It go both ways and stuff. The question is, so Mariah took her bag, her purse, and trying to give it to her. And I guess Kawhi said, oh, you're going to put it where? She said, put it where, where? So Mariah got an attitude. She said, give it to me bag. And Mariah, Kawhi got at it a little bit. They were saying something. She said, I can't your bag. I couldn't be nice to you or something. She said, thank you. And Kawhi did. She didn't even touch it. Mariah touched her hair. She said, don't you do that. She said, don't you do nothing. So I said, Mariah, she didn't touch you. She was nowhere near you. She didn't hit you. 
And so Mariah has a feeling to uh, to has one way to feel like she could hit Quad or something. I guess she wanted to hit Quad and get her frustration. But Mariah said, "No, we cool, we cool." So having them try to stop it, they got in the stick, um, got in their room. Quad shut the door, and they had a civil conversation. And um, Mariah uh, Quad said, "I can't be around an environment with where you think." It should be sensitive, and the sensitivity is not there. I'm going through something. And Mariah said, I understand what you're going for. This is what I was saying, Mariah said. I understand what you're going for. But um, I can see why the sensitivity is not there. Because when you put the friendship, they put their lives out there. They put it out there for the help to get healed. And you, they, I understand who you're coming from. I understand that you don't do that. You don't put yourself out there. You can't shut yourself out. So... Y'all need to have the common ground. We could use the opportunity to bond with them. And she said, I understand all that stuff, but I can't be in a man where there's not a sensitive environment. When she said that, heavily just threw away all her, well, her spiritual journey, her anger management didn't have it happen well yet. Because at the first session, she thought she was she had a handle. I said, no, you didn't, because you just blew up again. She said, how did you say we're not sisterly? We have been sisterly and everything. We're there for you. We love you, Quad. We love you, Quad. For you to say we bad people. And Quad said, I never say you're bad people. She said, how you say we're not sisterly? We have been good there. We've been friends. We all go through like shit. We all got stuff in our marriages that we're going through. And for you to say not that we not there for you, we love you, Quad. Do you want to see we love you? She said, I love you, too. And it's going off. So Quad was saying like that. She said, that's that's how you feel you could get a fuck up and go off and leave. I said, how? What? Really? And that's how the episode ended. Well, I said, heavily, listen, I understand you and your feelings, but you didn't have to flip up like that. You didn't have to flip out like that. I understand what that quad makes to trick on the nerve. If it triggered enough did that much that you got added to or you got quickly anger, it must be some truth to it. I'm sorry. But... In her vitamin, she don't feel like consistently love. Maybe it is to y'all, but the sensitivity to stuff is not there. And she doesn't feel that. I understand Quad has her ways. Y'all have your truth. And it's something in the middle is the truth. So, uh, next week is a continuation. And hopefully, Jackie, Dr. Jackie will come in and sit down with them. And they're going to continue this. I guess that flashback, flash flow where they had in the beginning of the episode season was this scene right here. So, hopefully... Days works out, and days come in a better understanding because I seem like nobody listens to each other. Everybody has their own opinion. Everybody is formulating their own thoughts, and it's not, and it's not really conducive as a listening environment. Nobody's, everybody's out for themselves, and nobody is care about each other's feelings. And y'all need to get down the egos and really sit down and have a mature conversation. And I guess having to see that's what said Jack, Dr. Jackie should be there because she would have calmed them down and had them really sit down and talk. And said in the eagles, they, everybody emotions is out here. Y'all need to get it together and keep it mellow. Right, so that was the review of Married to Medicine. It was a good episode. Hopefully we see more next week and how to resolve. Hope these ladies get it together and work it out. I'm sorry, I need to work it out. But I'm enjoying it so far. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. My name is Tom Mizzle. My channel is Mizzle14, and I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.